Well, hello everyone. I'm Apostle Charles Perry, and I want to welcome you to our YouTube channel here at Word of Restoration International Church. You know, this channel is our hub for new, fresh, and creative content from every area of the ministry here. We'll have something for everyone in your family, from children to teens, men's ministry, women's ministry, marriages, and so much more. You know, plus the Word of God will always be the glue that keeps us all connected so you can get the Word of God every time you come here to our YouTube channel. Now listen, I want you to make sure you spread the news and share this with your friends and family and coworkers and make sure you subscribe so you can be the first one to always receive from this amazing tool that we have here. Now listen, I wanna thank you uh, for coming to our YouTube channel and I guarantee you, you're going to be blessed. There's something available here that will bless your life. Now listen, I have to go because I want you to start moving through our channel. But remember, we are restoring lives with the Word of God. And when your life is restored, you know what I've been saying? Been saying it for 20 years. You shall have double. God bless you. And we love you with the love of God. Next on Restoring Lives broadcast. Concerning your situation. And many people, they lack the revelation that the Lord is with them because he's with you. But they lack that revelation. Go to Genesis chapter 39. Joseph knew that the Lord was with him. But not only did Joseph know the Lord was with him. And see, that, that's some people, you know, you know some, some things been going on in some of your lives and you hadn't been standing up. Why? Because you lack that revelation. You think you by yourself. You think because somebody got more money than you, you can't say anything. Amen. But you need a revelation that the Lord is with you. And he's bigger, than, he, 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 he's bigger than anybody you can be confronted with. He has more money than anybody. The Lord is with you. Say, the Lord is with me. And you, you got to meditate on that until it becomes a revelation for you. Imagination. Cast down thoughts, thoughts that you're not worth anything, thoughts that you're going to be lonely, thoughts that you're always going to be by yourself. you got to take authority over that because where the devil starts to work at is in the realm of your thinking. If he can dominate you in your thinking, he can reign over your life. And so you got to take authority over those thoughts. Yes. You can't just sit back and let the devil just give you all kind of thoughts and you just take it. You got to cast it down. Them negative thoughts and those imaginations, them images that keep flashing before you. You got to cast that down. Yeah. Amen. Because that, uh, the, the devil, the strongest weapon of the enemy is suggestion. He can't make you do anything you don't want to do, but he can sure suggest. And I'm telling you now, he got a whole lot of suggestion. And he'll shoot them all day long. He'll suggest that. And if he don't get you that, he'll suggest that. He don't get you that, he'll suggest that. He'll suggest, he'll keep on suggesting. And if you just sit there and let those suggestions pile up, listen, the thought that you don't cast down, that's the thought that's going to bring you down. And so you got to deal with those thoughts. You can't afford to let them sit around. You got to deal with them suddenly. You got to deal with them swiftly. He said, Satan hindered me. The devil hindered me. Satan, Satan hindered me. Satan would not let me go forward. Satan had me stuck where I was. Watch this now. I'm here in the physical, but my heart is over there. Yeah. Well, get over there where your heart is. I can't. Why? The devil won't let me get over there. 
And now many of you, you've been separated from your heart. You're stuck in places and your heart is no longer there. And people wonder why you're acting funny. I'm telling you why you're acting funny, because you're under spiritual attack. Because you used to be a good person. You used to be nice. People used to like, come on, tell you the person that say, folks used to like you. <laughs> but see, now you acting funny. And the reason you acting funny is because you're under spiritual attack. Your heart is no longer there. You know how you act when you're somewhere and your heart ain't there? You know how it is when you go to the mall with your wife and your heart ain't there? Oh, you know, brothers don't never say nothing. That's all right. <laughs> But he said, my heart was with you, so I'm in a place where my heart is not. I have desire to be where you are. And he said, I'm putting forth the effort. And although I'm putting forth effort, oh, miss this, I'm putting forth effort. My heart is there. I have desire. But that does not eliminate what the hindrances are. Amen. Amen. He said, Satan hindered me. And then we read Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 7, and he says, who has hindered you? So the second thing the passages reveal is that people can hinder you. And how many people that you have, not in your life, but in your way? You can't move forward because they won't let you move forward. You can't advance because they won't let you advance. And, and some of you, you have settled for people in your life that are nothing more than a weight. They are nothing more than baggage. They don't want to go forward and they don't want you to go forward. They don't want to increase and they don't want to see you increase. They don't want to do any better and they dare see you do any better. So what will they do? They'll hinder you. They'll talk you out of what's in your heart. They'll talk you out of your next place. They'll talk you out of having better. They'll talk you out of bigger. They'll talk you out of increase. He said, who? Who did it? That people will hinder you. But I like the last thing he said. He said, lay aside everything. Everything that hinder. Satan can hinder us. People can hinder us. And things can hinder us. Now, things could mean a number of, I like them shoes, Stanton. Things could mean, <laughs> things could mean a number, a number of things. <laughs> no, you should have saw them, but bad boy, bad man. I'm <laughs> but things could mean a number of things. It could mean a number of things. It could be things, material things. It could be possessions. Because, see, here's what you got to, because, see, even, even with having riches, the Bible talks about the deceitfulness of riches. That with, with, with every, see, with, with riches comes an element of deceit. Riches can fool you. Riches can deceive you. If not, the Bible wouldn't have called it the deceitfulness of riches. See, riches will make you think you don't need God. Riches will make you think you don't need to pray. I got money. I just go get what I want. Well, that's not how we're supposed to live. We're supposed to acknowledge him in all our ways. See, you, you prayed when you didn't have money. You don't stop praying because you got money. You don't just do what you want to do because whatever amount of money you have, it ain't yours no way. It all belongs to God. So you still got to acknowledge him in all your ways. But see, that's that, that's that element of deceit. That's that element of deceit. But he talked about lust and other things entering in that choke out the word of God. That when you have things come in and they begin to choke out the word of God, it makes you think that you don't need God. He said you got to lay aside everything that hinders you. Could be circumstances. Could be situations that's hindering you. Maybe you're going through a difficult time in your life and that situation has hindered you. That situation has you moving slow now. You were, you were progressing, you were excelling, you were going forward in life, and now you're just, you're just kind of chuckling along. Why? Because you're going through something. If you're not careful, those things can hinder you. He said, I want you to lay aside everything that hinders you. Amen. Amen. So you got to get rid of those things. Now, remember the statement I made 
The Lord with you equals success. The Lord with you equals success. And we know God wants us successful, but we understand what the Bible talks about when he talks about success. The Lord with you makes all the difference in your success. So let's look at the first roadblock. Now that's the, the purpose of volume two, is to really start talking about these roadblocks. The very first roadblock to success, this thing that's keeping you from advancing. Now remember, before I give it to you, Remember now, the last couple of weeks, we spent a considerable amount of time looking at the Lord being with us. Remember that? We talked about that in detail. We looked at scripture after scripture, and we know that the Lord is with us. So here's the first roadblock to success. Lacking the revelation that the Lord is with you. Lacking the revelation that the Lord is with you. Say, the Lord is with me. Lord is Say it again, the Lord is with me. Lord is See, that cannot just be information. That has to be revelation to you. That cannot just be something you learned in church. That has to be something that the Holy Ghost revealed to you. Yeah. That, that, see, see, revelation is the highest form of information. That once you have revelation, your life changes. When, when, you, get, when you get in, revelation is inside information on the mind of God. That, that when God gives you revelation, can't no devil, can't no body, can't no circumstance, can't no sin. I'm telling you, listen, people of God, when you get revelation, you change. I mean, there is this boldness in your life. Why? Because you heard from God. When you get revelation, that there is nothing higher than revelation. Paul said this statement, he makes this statement, he said, when I heard from the Lord, I start talking to people. Why? Because once I hear from the Lord, man ain't got nothing to say. Why? Because you can't improve on what God said. There is no wisdom outside of what God has to say. And that's why when Jesus asked Peter, when he asked the disciple, who do you say I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. What did Jesus say? He said, uh-uh, flesh and blood. Didn't give that unto you. You got that directly from my father, which is in heaven. Why? Because he had revelation. And what you need is a revelation that God is with you. Because when you you have a revelation that God is with you, it doesn't matter who's against you. It does, listen, when, when you got revelation that the Lord is with you, whoever is against you, you better start praying for them. Why? Because it's about to be on because the Lord is with me. I don't, I don't just have information that he with me. I, gotta, I know the Lord is I know that I know that I know. I know on the inside of me that the Lord is with me. That's revelation. When you have revelation, you be dying somebody tell you what you can't do. Where you can't go and what you can't. What you mean I can't have that? Just cause you said that, I'm gonna get two of them watching it. I got revelation. See, it's some, it's some on the inside. See, it's a revelation. And that's why when you're, when you're hearing the word of God, you can't just hear what I say. You need to hear what God is saying because that's where the revelation is. Ooh, Jesus. See, that's what, that's what changes you, man. That's what turns you into another man or into another woman. That's what causes you to look at your mountain and command that mountain to be removed. Why? You got a revelation that the Lord is with me. So you're never by yourself. You're never alone. You're never by yourself. Because you have revelation. And you have to know, it has to be revelation, people of God. It has to be a revelation that the Lord is with you. You're never by yourself. The Lord is with you. I remember when we were, when we were building this building, and, and see, see I, I know the Lord is with me. And see, when you know the Lord, you don't fear. You don't fear. You be, you be saying stuff you wouldn't normally say. <laughs> I remember we was building this building, and 
And, you know, I first, you've heard testimony about our first building, some stuff, they were doing all this kind of stuff. So, so they were doing some stuff, and it just wasn't right. And, 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 and so Missouri City, we in Missouri City is ETJ. So, so they, they have some say-so in some of the things that we do. We, we you know, submit to their codes and, and all that kind of thing. And so, the, um, so they heard we were, we were, we were doing some things, and, and the builder at the time, he hadn't, he hadn't talked to Missouri City. So Missouri City, they, they, they felt kind of slighted. Like we just gonna do what we wanna do. <laughs> so they came here, they came, we, we, we got news that they were coming. They came here with one intent, to shut this project down. They told, we're going to shut the project down. And they were coming. And, and when they came, and, and it, I won't call the lady's name, cause we, you, but I'm not going to call the lady's name. But this, this, lady, this, la- this lady is known for shutting you down. And, and so she, she, she came, and, and we, we, me and Chris was around, we saw them when they pulled up. I mean, the car almost on two wheels. They coming in here. Why? 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 Because they coming in here. They coming in here for one reason, and that's to shut us down. That woman came in here. She got out of that car. You know, she's a sister, too. She got out of that car. You, you know how a sister can get when she upset. So, look, look she... <laughs> Listen, she got out of that car, and boy, she, she was walking around looking and just talking, and, and you know, and she walking fast, and you just got to keep up with her. You know, she, she, she just talk, talking that trash, too. But watch this, watch this. And, and she said, she, and she just got tired. She just pointed out, I tell you what, I'm just shutting everything down. That's what she said. And I said to her, I said, I said, ma'am, I said, I don't mean no disrespect. I said, that's not going to happen. You show, Lord? <laughs> you show, you know. I, I, told, I said, that's not. And watch it. Now, I wasn't, I wasn't in my flesh now. Because by, by, by right now, she, she's in her right. But, but God is your judge. God is your lawgiver. He is your king. And he the one going to save you. So I, I, said, I said, ma'am, I don't mean no disrespect. I said, but that's not going to happen. And she looked at me. <laughs> and we were kind of standing over here by the garage. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, share with her the vision. But he told me, he said, but, but I want you to tie the vision into the, the building next to you, the, 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 where the church is next door, mm-hmm. the wooden church. He said, because I, I preached my first sermon there. He said, take her all the way back to where you preached your first sermon. And I remember I said to her, you see that building right there? She looked. <laughs> but then, but watch this. So I went through all that, went through all that. I'm just showing, the Lord, say the Lord is with me. I went, went through all that. And, and then after all that said and done, she, she just kind of looked. She said, I tell you what, I'm going to give y'all two weeks. That's all I need. That, that, that's, that's all I need. That, that's all I need. But see, I knew the Lord was with me. And, and you got to have a revelation that the Lord is with you. And when you have that revelation, you will not fear what man will do unto you. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because the Lord is with me. You don't fear what man can do unto you when you know the Lord is with you. But had I, not, had I not had that revelation, had it just been another sermon, had I not had the revelation, I wouldn't have said anything. But you speak, out of, you speak out of your revelation. Don't speak out of your situation. Speak out of the revelation concerning your situation. And many people, they lack the revelation that the Lord is with them because he's with you. But they lack that revelation. Go to Genesis chapter 39. Joseph knew that the Lord was with him. But not only did Joseph know the Lord was with him. And see, that, that's some people, you know, you know some, some things been going on in some of your lives. And you hadn't been standing up. Why? Because you lack that revelation. You think you by yourself. You think because somebody got more money than you, you can't say anything. 
Amen. Amen. But you need a revelation that the Lord is with you. Yes, and he's bigger, than, he, 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 he's bigger than anybody you can be confronted with. He has more money than anybody. Amen. The Lord is with you. Say, the Lord is with me. Lord and you, you got to meditate on that until it becomes a revelation for you. Now watch this. Now Joseph here, we, we read this last week, but I want to look at it again. Verse 30, uh, chapter 39, the Lord was with Joseph. We know that. And the Bible said he was successful because the Lord was with him. And not only was, was the Lord with, and, and, and the Bible said that, that Potiphar, Potiphar knew that the Lord was with him. Let me tell you something, you, you are not in your city. It, it, it doesn't matter what you are going through. And see, the reason some of you, you don't handle your situations right, things that you go through, troubles and sufferings and adversity, and all, because you don't have this revelation that the Lord is with you. So what do you do? You, you act out of your emotion. You get in the flesh because you don't have the revelation that the Lord is with you. You need that revelation that the Lord is, you will handle your situation a whole lot different if you knew the Lord was with you. And that was a revelation to you and not just some message you heard preached. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that Joseph, the Lord was with him, but, but it also says that, that, that Potiphar knew the Lord was with him. Potiphar, Potiphar, the scripture is clear. Potiphar, he knew. Now, Potiphar ended up throwing the guy in jail. Now, he didn't throw him in jail because he, he, he doubted if the Lord was with him. That woman put pressure on him. Uh, yeah, ain't nobody going to say nothing about that, but that, 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 that's what happened. That, Potiphar, knew that, Potiphar knew Joseph didn't try to rape his wife. Her evidence was, here's his jacket. He came in here and tried to rape me, and here's his jacket. That's what he said, here's his coat that he wear. Well, hold on, the man work here. So it's not unusual to see his coat around here. He work here. But she put pressure on him. Some of you know how that is. <laughs> and part of, look, part of, look, man, look, Joe. Hey, Joe, look. He probably took him outside and said, look, Joe, Joe, I already know, man. <laughs> but you know, man, I got I to live with this woman, man. You, <laughs> now, you going to prison. Look, while you're in prison, look, pray, pray for your boy. Because <laughs> I, got, I got to deal with this woman in here, man. He knew. <laughs> he knew. But he knew what he had to do. <laughs> Remind me of a story. <laughs> this, uh, this woman went to the store. She went to the pet store. And when she got to the pet store, she walked down the aisle, and there was this, this parrot in the cage. Parrot saw and said, ooh -wee. you sure ugly. I mean, you ugly. I ain't never seen nobody look like you. You about the ugliest person I ever seen. I mean, the woman, I mean, parrot just going off, and the woman, she, she's just insulted. Man, she goes to the manager. She, she says, listen, I have been insulted. I, I've never been talked to like this before, and I won't stand for this. And he said, which one of the employees was? He said, no, it's that bird over there. <laughs> Well, he said, ma'am, look, I apologize, and, and listen, that won't happen no more. That manager went over there, he snatched that bird out that cage, and I mean, he beat the feathers off that bird. <laughs> and he went to the woman, he said, well, ma'am, I apologize, and I guarantee you that won't happen no more. Said, well, okay, I appreciate it. She walked by that bird, and that bird just looked at it and say, you know. <laughs> Say, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. Say, I will, not fear I will not fear because the Lord is with me. And listen to me, people of God, and you got, you got to meditate on that until you see the Lord being with you, knowing that you are not alone, that you are not by yourself. 
whether you're single or married, you are never by yourself. The Lord is with you. When you're dealing with whatever you have to deal with in your life, the Lord, is, you, you're going to always have favor because the Lord is with you. Say it again, the Lord is with me. Come on, give the Lord a hand for the word. I got to stop. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Father, we thank you tonight for the word. We thank you, Father, that we know the Lord is with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. So, Father, it's not a matter of whether or not you're with us. It's a matter of whether or not we, we have that revelation that you're with us. So, Father, I pray tonight that you being with us is not just information for the people but it's actually a revelation. It's, it's an insight to see and know without any doubt that you are with us. So we thank you and we bless you for the word on tonight. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If you have been blessed by the teaching of Pastor Perry, come visit us at Word of Restoration International Church. For additional information, please call us at 281-431-5930 or visit our website at www.woric.org. Here at Word of Restoration, we are restoring lives with the Word of God. And when your life is restored, you shall have double.